I was 21 when I was first restrained. I'd be brought to hospital after close friends and family had reported that I'd been behaving strangely. They told me to take some medication, but I refused. I had heard about people who had been on medication, but I felt I couldn't afford to be drowsy. If anything, I needed my wits about me. They said they would have to force me to take it. I shouted no, I ran. There was nowhere to go. And all of a sudden, staff pounced to me and held me down. And because of all the things I heard, I, I feared that they were going to put me in a padded cell and a straitjacket. That's what made me panic and struggle more. I was scared, frightened. The whole ordeal brought me back to when I was attacked and mugged. They weren't even explaining what was happening. They didn't even prepare me for what was going to happen next. Without warning, they just pulled my trousers. And I felt a pain in my bum. In seconds, I felt drowsy, my body felt heavy, and all that tension loosened. After the restraint took place, staff didn't even say anything to me. It was just like it was another job for them to do. It seemed like all they wanted from me was just to keep quiet. I had been humiliated for no reason at all. Perhaps the staff could explain what happened and why. It was just like they didn't even know what to do. Or was this just a learning experience? What did I have to look forward to now? I just had to get well, and that's all they told me. Now I'll just keep out of their way. I'm quiet and withdrawn. I was in a psychiatric hospital in the waiting lounge, waiting to be seen by a doctor. I was feeling de detached, distracted by my own thoughts, when I heard the voice of Buddha speaking to me. And it, it was so loud, overwhelming, and because of the noise, I just slid to the floor. The voices were fascinating me, and I felt hyped up. And I will just lay there surrounded by these noises, people describing me in ways that I knew that I wasn't. Very big criminals. I could see split images of light and people, and that was so confusing. But two nurses held me and all the while they were explaining to me, sorry, we have to do this for your own safety. They were really firm and yet gentle and explaining to me the whole time what they were doing. And I just felt myself lying on the floor being held and I could still see everything in split images which was really confusing. I, I continued struggling. And suddenly, I heard one of the nurses saying, are you all right? Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. Sorry we had to do that. And they continued to hold me while they asked me, are you okay for us to let you go now? And I looked and I saw their faces whole and I could see that they meant well, so
So I felt I was able to say, yes, you, you can let me go. And then they helped me onto a chair and they waited with me until I was seen by the doctor. And although I had to stay in hospital for a few weeks after, that experience of being restrained didn't have a negative impact. Because I was treated in a professional and caring way. And I'd like to thank the staff for looking after me then. Two days before Christmas, the psychiatrist said that I could go home for a few hours on, on Christmas Day to be with my little girl, as long as a relative picked me up and brought me back. I was so happy and relieved because the thought of not being with her on that day was unbearable. But then, on Christmas morning, the nurse in charge said he wasn't authorising me to go. I asked why, and he just said it was his decision on the day and wouldn't give a reason. I started crying and he said, I don't think you're in any state to go home, look at how upset you are. I said, that's because you're not letting me be with my little girl. He wouldn't change his mind and he told me to go to my room. I was really stunned and, and dazed and I just wanted to sit and have a cup of tea, but he told me again, go to your room, Rachel. I said, no, I don't want to go there. Not being with my little girl was so distressing that I knew that I'd hurt myself if I was alone in my room. So then suddenly, him and another two nurses, they were there, either side and, and at my back, and they started pushing me towards the bedrooms. Until then, I was really upset, but I wasn't making a fuss or shouting, but having them pushing me like that, it was like hitting a switch and, and all this panic flared up and my instincts just took over and I started screaming and struggling to get away from them. They held me down on my bed and I was screaming, let me go. They said they wouldn't let me go until I calmed down. But it was them holding on to me that was causing all this panic in the first place. They wouldn't let go. The panic was so massive. It was like this flashback feeling to, to when my parents would go out and my brother would hit me and tie me up and sit on me and put cushions on my face and I'd feel like I was going to suffocate. And the three of them holding me down like that, it was bringing it all back. I didn't quieten down until... I was physically exhausted from struggling, not because I was any calmer. I feel really damaged by what happened. Like any rights over myself were just taken away. It is so humiliating to know that you've just been reduced to this screaming mess and they're seeing you like that in that state. still affects me, like when I remember it, it brings back this feeling of being totally helpless. And it takes a while to shake that feeling off. Things could have been different. When I said I wasn't going to go to my room, they could have chosen to give me a moment to prove that I could sit quietly. But instead, as soon as I said no, they took hold of me. It's as if someone saying no is a sign of imminent trouble. They act on the defence all the time, expecting the worst. You're going to be violent or, or cause trouble. It really hurts to be viewed like that. 